Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a different type of keyboard. Obviously, if you grew up in the 80s or 90s, the theme is instantly recognizable. Um, this may as well be called the NES keyboard um, because the colors, the design, everything about this is... Super Nintendo, the, the entertainment system, the one that in the 90s, <laughs> we, we all either had or we had a friend that had one, and we all learned to play a lot of games, I mean, Zelda, Super Mario, um, it was the second revolution, I'm a little bit older, so I remember the Atari, I had the Atari, so that was kind of like the first, you know, console revolution, that, the ColecoVision, um, you know, they were, don't get me wrong, they were good, but I mean, looking at them now, it's like, how do you play that? You I mean, the, <laughs> literally 40 by 25 or 40 by, or 80 by 25 resolution, I mean, it was, it was a very bare bone, let's say, you know, with the 8-bit graphics. But, when the Nintendo came out, uh, the N NES, um, I think it was a Family Con, but that might have been the one before it it changed everything i mean games went to a whole new level um i mean don't get me wrong there were some you know games that weren't very good but for the most part i mean especially i mean super mario brothers how many hours i went through and played and you know i had to beat all the levels and find the secret tunnels and there was there was many hours of entertainment fun brought with these so uh this keyboard speaks to that um that reminisce i mean that's that's the first thing i saw i went ahead and purchased this one myself um because i'm interested to see is this keyboard really worth it i believe i got it on sale i want to say it was 119 but now I'll, I'll put everything in the uh, technical section but i you know was curious is this just gimmicky or is this actually you know putting something behind the um uh, i mean this is this is a part of my memory i mean it, it's not obviously exact but the colors the way that it's laid out the lines everything makes me think nes so you know are they just using our retro aesthetics something that will strike an emotional chord just to sell a keyboard that is meh or is it actually delivering a keyboard that is commensurate or, you know, deserves the moniker of, you know, being in that same class of memory as the Super NES? So, that's what I'm here to do today. So, it is a TKL, which, of course, is my favorite. And um, so, it's already got a piece of my heart right there. Um, it is a three mode, which, eh, uh, I could, you know, take it or leave it. Um, it does have what appears to be two toggles, and I'm guessing those are indicators. Uh, the volume over on the left is is not, I mean, it should be over here. Now, I understand the power button's over there and everything, but I don't know. I personally, and plus because it's a, it's like a paddle knob, it's, I don't know, it should be round. It should be something, I might be able to do it with my fingers, but... It's way on the other side of the keyboard. I'm used to just reaching for the top of my keyboard and not having to look and hitting the knob. Um, it is, it has become one of the most important features for me as far as how I uh, work because I will either be blasting music or I'll have a podcast on or I'll have sometimes a couple of things playing at the same time and I need a way to be able to shut everything down in an instant to either take a call or, you know, speak with someone in person. So anyway, um, but let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let me see. We have 87 keys, 2.4, it's a three mode, 2.4, and Bluetooth has PBT keycaps. It has botanical, mechanical switches. It has hot swappable sockets, programmable keys, and it does look like it comes with a, a paddle. So, and those are programmable. 
I don't know if the rest are. So, <clears throat> hmm. All right, well, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in the box. I'll set the keyboard aside just for the moment and see what we, what else we have in the box. Now, all right, so those appear to be buttons and indicators. Uh, favorites, I don't know what the difference between the star and the heart is. Press for half a second and then wireless and then WDA. Oh, uh, that's a way, okay, so you can use the keyboard to program these pads. All right, so it does look like those pads actually connect into the uh, keyboard through like appears to be like a phono jack kind of thing but I guess they're just shortcuts for quick things you like to do show how to okay these are commonly used shortcuts so you can bind them to key combinations that's what it appears like you do control C control V um, I guess you could put these stickers either over them or next to them but I mean that's pretty cool customization We've got a card that somebody has mainly checked this. This is usually a good indicator that, you know, there's been some QA, QC uh, enacted in place. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not that hard to just create a card and put the date on it. But more likely than not, this was hand-packed and inspected before it went out. We have a, uh, wow, we have a manual. Oh, okay, it's several languages, I was going to say. All right, so we have a user manual. Seems fairly uh, comprehensive. There's several different languages, and each has their section. So we'll probably take a look at this once we get to that point. That's the first language. It looks to be English, one through six. All right, so we'll take a closer look at this as we get into it. Pretty standard rubberized USB-C to USB-A cable. It does have the logo um, embedded into the end and uh, some stairs on the other end. Then we have the, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be like a controller pad. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like a, basically they're repurposing a phone or a, a headphone jack, an eighth, eighth of an inch jack two-channel or three-channel actually so um, oh, they do come off and they actually do have actual switches I was I was curious about that and um, uh, obviously that was a quick response looks like they have a little plate they have some weights in there to obviously make this feel more substantial this is a um, yeah a clicky switch it is a gator on a clicky a green a clicky switch so let's stick that back in there and then we have the big big key I don't personally remember those buttons being clicky but I mean, I guess I get it. I, I would have, I would have gone with a linear. I would have gone either with a linear or with a tactile to really make it feel instead of because that it's like got a muted click. It sounds kind of the click sounds kind of like it's sick because it's echoing inside of the chamber of the button. But maybe I'm just overthinking. It. All right, so here we are with the um, 8-bit do retro keyboard and. The, one of the first things I notice is that it feels extremely light. I, I'm going to say I, I expected this to be a little bit more substantial. It's, um, it, it's hollow. It, it, it sounds and it doesn't have really much flex to it, but it's got a bunch of hollow spaces in there and it's super light. I gotta be honest from the picture, I also thought those were actual physical ridges. That's just a sticker. Uh, these are buttons and that's a volume knob that is in a very, it's an awkward position. 
I mean, what am I going to rest my hands on keys while I do the volume? I have to do this. I mean, if I was left-handed, that'd be perfect. But I'm right-handed. And it's, I have to reach across the keyboard. I'm going to have to find it, make sure I'm not turning off this one because they they have clicks as well. So, I mean, this one obviously only has three positions, but and this one's infinite. But it's, it's poor design in my opinion. I, 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 I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't use that. Now, Yeah, I'm, this is not one of those thock stock <laughs> out of the box going to sound good keyboards. I was, I was kind of afraid of this. I mean, they, I think that more effort was put into copying the NES to play on, you know, that nostalgia that many of us that had these systems grew up with them have, you know, with just the colorways and, you know, it, it in most of us it's going to bring up joy it, yeah, it might bring up some fights that we had with siblings <laughs> over the controller uh, but it's going to evoke nostalgia and i was afraid that they're like all right we the design's fine who cares how it sounds who cares how it performs though at the price and i read some positive reviews i mean but they were coming from magazines that I've always just kind of gotten the impression that, you know, they're getting paid to write these articles and, you know, they're, they, they're balanced and they say a couple little things that, you know, are, you know, negligible at best, but they overall, you know, four and a half stars, 4.3 stars, 4.7 stars out of five. So I, I tend to always take those with a grain of salt. I mean, that's why I try, I don't try to do commercials. I just try to hey, this is me discovering a product. What do you guys think, you know? And just try to figure it out, you know, find out in, in the moment. So let me go ahead and pull these out. They're going to be die sub? Yeah, they're die sub. Now, they do, they do seem to be fairly thick. Oh, let me zero this out. 1.4, that's actually not bad at all. So they're 1.4, 1.5 millimeter in thickness, which is pretty good. But <clears throat> we have some kale cookies. So can't say I'm a fan of uh, box style switches. Most likely has a, yep, there's the click bar right there. We can see on the inside of the housing. So when you press it, it presses on that click bar and I don't know don't get me wrong I don't hate clickies and I kind of like a few clickies that I've tried in metal cases and, and I plan some more sound tests but so in a uh, market that <clears throat> I mean I purchased a GMK 67 for $19 I got a GMK another GMK 87 for $30 um, yes they're bare bones and yes, they're, you know, don't follow a theme. But, I mean, these are stickers. I could add stickers. I can get a, a Super Nintendo space bar. I can get a keycap set that, in my opinion, actually looks more like NES than this one does. I don't know the font. It doesn't feel right. Um, and I think it could be could have been done much better. Again, my opinion. Um, I also would have included some extra keys. I mean, obviously nothing with Nintendo on it. But, you know, BA, uh, select, start, some, so that you could mix it up a little bit. They are only sticking to this design. And this, uh, it reminds me more of a Commodore 64 and VIC-20. Because they had this, that bubble LED power light. So it's kind of like, well, oh, let's throw a little Commodore 64 in there, which was a whole different ball of wax. There wasn't that many kids that had, um... Commodore 64s, but one of my points I was trying to make is that for you know 20 bucks or under 20 bucks for the GMK 67 or closer, you know, 30 dollars for the GMK 87, which is a TKL, um, it is a three mode, it is via, it has a knob, it has a screen, it's bare bone, but 
I mean, like I said, there are keycaps. There's rant, there's various um, Nintendo like and Mario and, and different character related keycap sets that I've seen. These appear to be, I'd say, an OEM. But one thing that I can see is that there there is no not even any PE foam on top of the PCB, um, and there are no RGBs like. If I want nostalgia, I kind of want my LEDs. I want, you know, some, I want some, some light. It's part of the experience is that, hey, can I have, can I get some lights? I, I mean, so, you know, not only that, I mean, okay, so we do have some, so we don't have any RGBs. We don't have anything above the plate, any sort of. I mean, IXPE foam is kind of standard nowadays. Doing a pet is even better. They have none of those what are now standard foams and don't have any RGB. I mean, I just, uh, I don't know. That's, uh, it, to me, it kind of perplexes me. Like, did you guys, like, ask any, you know, people that that you expect to be clients any prospective customers that would be interested in this product whether they would like rgb or not i mean i can take it or leave it but when it comes to this i want rgb on this why because it's it's nostalgia again it goes back to you know when leds really started you know starting to pop out become popular and having rgbs and those colors on there just would enhance this experience especially like i said the keycaps aren't really like i said they could have done better the volume is badly placed this looks more more like a comet or even an apple power light this is just a sticker instead of actually having some physical fins on here which would have made a huge difference because why nintendo had them commodore had them so it's like they did it halfway like, uh, this is good enough. But, I mean, not having any of that. Let's see if I take a, just take a standard. This is a JWK linear switch. And pop it in here real quick, just out of curiosity. Oh. Right. Oh, now I'm trying to do it south. It's north facing. Yeah. No RGB and north facing, but, okay. So, here's just a linear switch. I don't know if that echo is coming through, but it's from the keycap as well as from the case. And that clicky is almost anemic. It's not, you know, click, click, click. It's... The tones are very similar, too. I mean, they should sound very different in tone, but... It's loud, that's about all I can say, but I, I, I personally do not like how it sounds. I, I don't know, I, I just, and I did not see any choices for um, you know, being able to choose different switches. I mean, it's hot swap and you can change them out, but it doesn't have any LEDs. So it just, it, you just kind of blew the winds out of my sails. Honestly, it, it really just, yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it looks like little bricks. Yeah, Super Mario. And it's magnetic. And then A, B, X, Y. So you can have a whole bunch of those paddles plugged up to this. Uh, uh, and then we have a plastic case. And don't have any adjustable feet. So... The angle they give us, that's the angle we get. So I'm, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, no, I'm not kind of, I am disappointed. I, I, I can't say that, I mean, I, I was afraid of this, but I, there was something in me that was going, no, no, this is going to be a great keyboard and you're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to keep it, you know, and, 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 and use it because I like it, not be, just because I bought it and reviewed it and then don't ever want to touch it again that's I don't, I don't want to mess with this keyboard I'm not going to use this keyboard I uh, 
all it's going to do instead of bringing nostalgia it's going to it's going to make me feel sad because of the potential that this keyboard could have had i mean i don't think i'll ever design a keyboard i I've, I've got plenty of things going on but if i ever were to i would love to do a retro aesthetic i mean the 5150 has been done over and over again i would actually go for a mix of a Commodore 64 and a 128, or a mix of an Apple 2E and a Commodore 64, or something like that, maybe take elements from a whole bunch of them and create something that I think would be fun and enjoyable and not too expensive because there's no need to get crazy pricey. Prices are coming down. So <clears throat> we have a keyboard that, I mean, is really all show, but not really, I don't know. In my opinion, it just, it's not a, it doesn't sound good. And if we're going to want to make it sound good, before I plug it in, we're going to make it want to sound good. We're probably going to have to unscrew the release stabilizers too while we're at it. Well, they're not loose, I can say that. They're nice and steadily attached. And they're not overly greased, they're greased enough. And the plate... Hmm. The plate might be aluminum. It, it feels hard enough to be. Yeah, I think that's aluminum. That's not a plastic. So, so the plate's aluminum, which is going to make the clickies sound even... I mean, I don't know. In a plastic, I like the clicky, but in a metal, steel, or aluminum, it just just resonates and it creates that ping thing. For me, it's unpleasant anyway. All right, so I'm kind of curious how to open this. I don't see any screws. I kind of suspect they might be hiding under here. Yep, that's where they are. Now, I do kind of find this a little odd Usually, when you have screws, they're going to be in the same spot structurally, so you'd see the corners, or you'd see the inside. But here we have one off-center one way, this one's off-center another way, this one's off-center the same as that one, but that one's all the way over to the right. screws underneath the feet and then some of the hardest clips I've had to deal with as of yet. Let's pull it up slowly. Alright, so there's the JST. There's the daughter board with the um, headphone jack adapters. And like I suspected, there's absolutely nothing in the case. That's that hollow sound that you hear from the bottom of it. And then we do have foam between the plate and the PCB, and this does appear to be a top mount, but there's no gaskets or spacers between it. That's why there's no flex whatsoever. Um, uh, the PCB looks decent enough. These are kale hot swap sockets. But, I mean, to see nothing below the PCB, it's, um, I don't know, it's got definitely a, a different type of design. Um, I can't say I'm too fond of it, but again, I didn't even think to look to see if it had LEDs. I just assumed it did. It's a gamer's keyboard. Why would it not have RGB? So, I don't know. This is, um, this is one of those 
oddities that I come across every once in a while that I'm just not sure, you know, I mean, like I said, I get the impression that they, they were just aiming to do something that looked cool, but weren't really aiming to do a good keyboard. Anyway, that's the impression that I get from the way that this has, this is constructed from how it comes with um, clicky switches, but it has no, uh, no LEDs um, from the, the numerous things that I find with this. It's not really moddable. They don't really want you getting in there. That's for sure. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the 8-bit do retro keyboard in the NES style. It is a three-mode plastic TKL that includes a wired programmable paddle that has two buttons. This keyboard comes with an aluminum top-mounted plate. It has a south-facing hot swap PCB without LEDs. It comes preloaded with kale box white clicky switches, the only choice available, and die sub PBT MDA profile keycaps. This keyboard weighs in at 1,045 grams and is loaded with a 2,000 milliamp hour battery. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 40 millimeters, providing for an angle of typing of 9 degrees. It does not have adjustable feet. The manufacturer's suggested retail price for this keyboard is $99, and it is available on Amazon. All right, so I got to put back together, and I got to say that this is a, um, at best, in my opinion, a uh, 25 30 dollar keyboard yes even with the wi-fi and the hot swamp because it's a cheap case they're only using foam between the plate and the pcb they use an aluminum plate with clickies which honestly it's like it just makes it it turns the thing into a bell i mean put it up to your ear and hit any of the keys and you can just hear the reverberation now I get that, you know, buckling springs were the thing back in the day and they're trying to combine, you know, a Nintendo system slash controller with a mechanical keyboard, but I don't know, I, I would have had options of switches, maybe some tactiles, but I would have had LEDs. $99 for a retro gaming sort of uh, keyboard or centric keyboard, I definitely would have put leds behind the keys um and i would have incorporated them better i would have done that as a ridge uh, i mean this is plastic ejection molding from what i can gather they could have easily done ridges even if they aren't actual you know fan grills it's just something that looks cool so that you actually have that there's a lot of things about this keyboard that if it was 25 30 even 35 maybe with the paddles I'd say, oh, okay, well, at that price, I, I get it, you know, it's fine, but I can't use this keyboard, not as it is. I would have to do a lot of modding to it, and it, it doesn't really lend itself to being opened. Um, I don't think they want anyone getting in there, uh, so, I don't know. I, I, I personally... I don't feel this keyboard's worth $99, so I'm not, I don't, I don't feel good about this purchase, to be quite honest. I feel that when I can go and get something like this, a fully aluminum 75%, um, with switches and keycaps for $99, the rating 75. Now, these are tactiles, but the, it's still a stock keyboard. It sounds, it looks amazing, it's, it's lovely, um, it's just, uh, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And in today's day and age, our money just does not go as far as it used to. So when I'm going to spend my money on something, I prefer to do it on something that holds value. This doesn't hold value to me. This speaks, it says cheap imitation. We're going to copy the NES, but just enough to not get sued because Nintendo is still a company. And I mean, there's no mention really of Nintendo. They call it the 8-Bit Do Retro. And they have two different versions. One is the 
N and one is the FAMI. Because they're not saying FAMICON, they're not saying NES, I think that's how they're getting away. Because it, it, it says inspired by the classics and there is a Nintendo off to the side with part of its name rubbed away. Nowhere on here do I see a notice of copyright use of Nintendo. So how they can blatantly go and copy Nintendo like this. I mean, yes, they don't. It doesn't say Nintendo anywhere, but the B and the A, the uh, the colors, the uh, well, the fake fins on the sticker. Um, it's very reminiscent of a Nintendo Entertainment uh, system, and especially when they include you know actual Nintendo games and a Nintendo and, and an actual NES in the their promotional materials it's like hey how is this not violating any sort of um trademarks or copyright you know i mean it's it's off to me it's infringing on it. how they they get away with it i don't know but then at least if you're going to try to imitate it you know make it feel good i mean the nes god knows those cartridges could take a beat and keep on ticking um uh, the controllers, I, I I know plenty of fights that got started with those controllers being swung around and hitting other people with them. People playing the game and getting so excited, they literally yank the uh, controller, which would pull the Nintendo off the whatever shelf it was on and eject the cartridge and it land like, you know, five feet off the ground and you just plugged everything back up, put the uh, cartridge back in and Turn it back on. I, I mean, they, 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 they were, unless you dunked it in water, those things were pretty tough and they felt like they were. This feels cheap and it's unbalanced. It doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like it's $99 and it doesn't feel like it's doing a good job of representing a nostalgia that I have a lot of respect for because it was, you know, part of my, my, um, my youth. So it's kind of like, ah, ha, ha, we're going to try to get you to buy this and we're going to put as little effort as possible, a little material into as possible and just take advantage of the nostalgia, but not really give you a product that is worth the money. I mean, I'm sure I would guess with switches, with keycaps, everything, this came in at 10 to $12 to manufacture. So that's why I say, okay, 30, maybe even 35, all right, you want to, you know, between the middlemen and everything so somebody can make a little money off of it, I get it. But you guys are going direct from, you know, you guys are having the manufacturer, or 8 Do is having these manufactured and they're selling them. If they if they've purchased or had more than a thousand made, which I'm sure, my guess from the prices I've seen from wholesale, this is probably about a $12 keyboard at the most that the cost to manufacture them. So they cheapened out to make more profit and <clears throat> they didn't do a good job at representing a whole, a whole generation, honestly, that of, of those of us who grew up with Nintendo, um, it's just, I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm looking too far into it. But anyway, taking that out of it, um, it's not really meant to be opened. It's got an odd top mount that it doesn't really, doesn't have the uniformity that other top mounts that I've tested have. But granted, it is using a clicky switch on aluminum plate, so it's grating to my ear anyway. Um, and and I, it's not that I hate I don't hate clickies. It just doesn't sound good in here. It sounds like a bell because of all of that empty space. I mean, the entirety of that bottom case is empty and a lot of this because of the plate and everything comes through about right here. So, uh, yeah, because this is part of the daughter, daughter board. So I, honestly, I, I don't know. I guess it's for folks that have more expendable income and want to just buy it and stick it up like next to their Nintendo as a display and don't want to use it. I mean, if you're looking at it as a Chotsky, as some sort of decoration, as something that'll just pop up in the wall and 
and ninety nine dollars isn't you know much to you well you know go for it but I personally I I, I, I want to be able to use my keyboards and I also want to be able to, to enjoy them um, this one might tune out okay but I just I, I, I don't want to take the chance 99 bucks I mean I could buy you know the drop CSTM 80 and I think at 99 bucks that's better even bare bone than this and I didn't like the drop CSTM so spending $99 on this is just yeah. so doing anything further to it is not in uh, it's not something I plan let's just put it that way anyway I I, I tr trying to think of anything positive about it but unfortunately I think it kind of struck a nerve with me that I was I was expecting a keyboard I was really gonna enjoy um, this was uh, actually kind of picked out by my wife because she knows how much I, I love this this aesthetic and, um, and she's like you know I hope you love it and you know I'm not gonna feign and say oh, I really love it but I mean when I first got it I was like oh okay cool but I just uh, I don't know that's those are my thoughts on it anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of this keyboard. Um, I'm probably not going to be keeping it, so. Uh, but I mean, if you have any questions, um, comments, please feel free to share them down below. I do my best to answer each and every single comment. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.